No Man's Sky is not the easiest to get started with. Thanks to the absence of a tutorial, you really just get thrown in the deep end. I found myself looking up things every time I played, so in this video I want to try and cover all the main bits that are important to understand at the start. If you have any specific questions, please don't hesitate to comment below and myself or someone else in the community will get back to you. And if in the future you ever get stuck, just come back to the video and comment again. Without further ado though, let's start with the basics, your tools and systems, and stick around till the end to see the best way to earn units. In terms of your main systems then, you have life support and hazard protection. Both of these are expendable so will need replenishing. Life support with oxygen and hazard protection with sodium. And for both, this can be done from the quick menu under recharge equipment. Not all planets do have hostile weather environments though, so you'll find some where hazard protection isn't needed. Equally though, on other planets it will drain much more quickly, especially during storms. And both sodium and oxygen can usually be found nearby, so your scanner will show you where the closest examples are. Most other common resources in No Man's Sky can be found this way, and simply need your mining laser to extract. Some metals however will need to be found in ground deposits. The quickest way to find them is by using your analysis visor and tagging them up. You'll then need to use your terrain manipulator in its mine mode to dig them up and extract the resource. Something to keep in mind when it comes to deposits though is that not every material is present on each planet. To see what's on yours, go to the discoveries tab in the menu where it will be listed here. The next point about resources is that some will require refining to obtain. You'll craft a portable refiner very early on, which you can then take with you. To fuel it, you'll need carbon, which can be obtained by just mining trees or any other plant life forms. You can generally refine most pure elements. The main one you'll need at the start is copper, which refines down to chromatic metal, needed to craft technologies. On screen are some of the other main ones that are helpful to know. Also, watch out for the ratio shown here, which shows you how much you need to put in to get one unit out of the refined product. Make sure you put in enough, otherwise it won't work. To round off the info you need on resources, we should also look at the ones mined in space. You'll run into many asteroid fields on your travels, and by shooting the asteroids you can get tritium, needed to fuel your ship, as well as gold, silver and platinum, which you should absolutely hang on to to sell later. You may also find some tritium hyperclusters, which you should hit analyse on like this, to extract a load of tritium. Also, if for some reason you can't find any asteroid clusters, your scanner does work in space, so use that and it will ping the nearest ones. So next up, onto your ship, which is pretty crucial in a space exploration game. You'll repair it early on and subsequent missions will get you improving it. As you'll find out though, it needs a lot of maintenance, mainly by refuelling, so let's look at the launch thrusters first. When you start out, these will lose 25% of their charge every time you take off, which is a bit of a pain. One option is to fuel with uranium, which you can buy, as I'll explain shortly, or find in deposits on radioactive planets. Alternatively, you can craft its specific fuel. Find an empty slot and locate Starship launch fuel. It needs 40 dihydrogen and one metal plating. To get your dihydrogen, you simply need to refine tritium, which you get from asteroids, and metal plating can be easily crafted from ferrite dust. Ferrite dust is the stuff you get from mining any random rock that you'll find all over the place. Then just head to an empty slot and craft the launch fuel and pop it into the launch thruster. Luckily, your pulse engine, which is the thing that lets you do this, is much simpler to refuel as it will take tritium in its standard form. The final piece is your hyperdrive, which you'll get near the end of the intro missions and allows you to get between star systems. Refueling this one is a bit more complex again. You'll need a warp cell, which is made from antimatter and antimatter housing. The housing is pretty easy, crafted from just oxygen and ferrite dust, while the antimatter itself needs chromatic metal and condensed carbon. Condensed carbon can be mined as it is, looks like this, or made by refining carbon, and the chromatic metal is of course refined copper. Once you've crafted those, you can craft the warp cell in an empty slot and then pop it into your hyperdrive. The other thing about ships is that you can buy, sell and trade them. There are lots of types including fighters, haulers and shuttles, and the desirable ones will be up in the 5 plus million unit range, so not cheap. What's great though is that you can pretty much buy any ship you see. The best way to do this is to go to a trading outpost. You'll find those by just flying low around a planet, they're hard to miss. The ships that will be going in and out of here every minute or so, and if you see one you like, go up to it and see who owns it. The NPC who does may be nearby or in the trading area, so check both, but they won't be hard to find. Once you have got hold of the owner, you can buy the ship or trade them. Do note that the trade in value of the default ship is not very helpful though. Different ships can offer you different functions, better capacities, or they may be better equipped upgrade wise, so it's worth it when you can afford them. And using the method I'll show you at the end, it won't be long before you can, which is why I included it in the video. Next up is space stations. While you're flying around, you'll soon come across one. In fact, you get forced into one by a mission, so you will get familiar. It doesn't make you explore or understand it though, so here's the overview. 
The space station is basically a hub for almost everything. I say the, but there's actually one in every single system. On the left side, you can customize your character and ship, as well as purchasing upgrades for both of them, also your tools. This includes everything from better ship weapons to more inventory space, more capable multi-tools, all helpful stuff. On the right hand side, you have a teleporter, more on that shortly, and a mission merchant, where you can grab some quick mission contracts for payouts and accreditation with the different NPC species. Importantly, there's also an intergalactic trade terminal in the back right, which is the robot eye looking thing. Here you can buy resources you need and sell the ones you have, so that gold you found in the asteroid field, this is the place to cash it out. Something to note here is that when you sell something, the price of it on the market does fall. Therefore, if you're, say, selling 100 platinum, you need to make sure you sell it all in one go to get the highest price. If you dither about and sell it in batches, you won't get quite as many units for it. Not too important for selling just a few, but when you're shifting larger amounts, it's good to know. The other place you'll find these terminals is at any trade outpost, which are the place that I recommended you buy ships. So now here's a rundown on currency. The main one is, of course, units. This is what you should have the most of, and it's the currency used for buying and selling resources. You'll find yourself earning units for loads of random things all over the place, but I'll show you the best way to farm them at the end. The secondary currency in No Man's Sky is nanites, and you'll need these to purchase the upgrades I mentioned earlier from the space station. Nanites can be found in most small buildings that you'll find randomly on most planets, but the easiest way to get them is by repairing damaged machinery, which looks like this and can also be found all over the place. To repair it, you just have to remove some junk or slime by putting it in your own inventory, and you'll be rewarded with nanites. The other and possibly easiest way to get them in the early game though is by uploading your discoveries. When using your analysis visor you can hold down the other trigger to scan most animals, plants and even minerals, so basically just rocks. You'll get some units for this at the time, but if you go to the discovery menu you can upload what you've just found in return for nanites. Now you can do this individually, but if you hit circle or B on Xbox you'll find another menu where you can hit the upload all button, just under all visited systems. It's a good idea to visit lots of planets if you want to rack up nanites this way, as the stuff you scan will of course be unique between planets. The final currency is Quicksilver, which you only need if you want some specific, mostly cosmetic items. A lot of the customization will be free. To get Quicksilver, you have to do the daily mission from the Nexus in the Anomaly. More on that shortly. Next up, onto bases, and the key to building your base is a base computer, made from 30 chromatic metal, again, just refined copper. Putting down your computer lets you basically claim the nearby land as yours, so you can build on it. You'll have access to the main wooden panels straight away, as long as you've got enough carbon, so it's easy to get something up quickly, and I'd advise not spending too much time on your first build, as you'll pretty much want to start again once you unlock the better materials. After you've got your shelter built though, you'll be prompted to make a construction research unit. With this, you can unlock the technology you'll want to put inside your base, as well as better structures to build with. The first blueprint you should be looking to unlock is the teleporter, and to power that you'll also need a power source and the electrical wiring. It's smart to go with the biofuel reactor first, but later aim to switch to solar panels and batteries. Once you've crafted and hooked up the teleporter to the generator, you can fuel it with carbon. You can now use your teleporter to go to other bases and easily get back and forth from the space station. Going back for a second though, unlocking the technology such as the portal and generator requires salvage data. It's really an item, but acts more like a currency here. This can be found by yourself or earned from one-off missions. If you choose to find it yourself, which I recommend, you're looking for this Wi-Fi-like symbol on your analysis visor. Tag that and head over to it. Once you're there, you can dig to it with your terrain manipulator and you'll earn between one and four salvage data. So finally then, let's take a look at a really good way to earn lots of units so you can get on with buying the ships and materials you need. It's very simple and easy to do. All you need is some chlorine, oxygen and a medium refiner. To get the medium refiner though, you're going to have to go to the Anomaly, so a quick rundown on that. The Anomaly is the multiplayer hub. You'll discover it in the later stages of the intro missions, and once you have, it can be spawned in like this. Really reminds me of the Death Star. Its main feature is the Nexus, which is where you can pick up co-op multiplayer missions that can reward you with any of the three currencies we went over earlier, so worth doing. If you're trying to make money before you've got the Anomaly though, then I'd recommend just selling the gold, silver and platinum you get from Asteroid Fields. Once you're at the Anomaly though, head up the stairs and go right to the back, where you'll find all the upgrade merchants. There's lots of really cool stuff here, so do look around, with unlocks for everything from Exocraft to underwater building modules. The one you need for this though is second on the left, where you can unlock the medium refiner for just 10 salvage data. Once you've crafted it, your aim is to make and sell lots of chlorine, by actually refining chlorine with oxygen. To get the chlorine you need to start off, you can refine salt that you'll find underwater, 
or you'll find it as it is on Radioactive Planet. Alternatively, you may be able to buy it from trade terminals depending on your difficulty mode. Same goes for the oxygen, but that's much easier to find on your own. This basically works because by adding oxygen, you get a lot more chlorine out than you've just put in, and it sells for a very good price. This also means that you only need to start out with a tiny bit of chlorine, as you can take what you've just made and refine it over and over again with more oxygen to get more. Then, once again, head to a trade terminal at an outpost or at the space station and sell your chlorine, making sure to hold back some to use for the next run. Also, don't forget to sell it all in one go for the best price, not in batches. Once you've got that down, rinse and repeat and you'll have a very nice amount of units pretty damn quickly. So that's everything I have for you in this video. Don't forget that if you have any questions, you can get them answered by commenting down below. And feel free to come back to this video in the future if you ever get stuck and comment again. If you have enjoyed this video though, or found it useful, then a like or even a sub would be absolutely amazing. But that's all, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.